We talk about so many of our trades after the fact, and while we've done a really good job this year and hope that recapping trades can help you learn about how we approach and set them up, we figured it might be a little more helpful to explain a trade that we just made so that not only can you learn about the setup behind it and how we approached that trade, you could also have the opportunity to take advantage of it with us. This low risk, high reward trade has the following potential outcomes, and we show this chart stopping at 20 on the bottom end because that is theoretically about as low as it can go in the near future. How does it work? Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money. So let's again jump back to that uh, profit outcome chart that we showed a second ago. As you can see, we really have infinite potential profit. You can see that right here, maximum return is infinite on the upside. And you know, worst case scenario really is that we lose 525 bucks. So I guess so that we don't bury the lead here, what is the play? It is ticker PSTH and we're gonna be purchasing October 15th, 19 strike calls. So, you know, PSTH is trading at 2021. This is a little bit in the money. The expiry, it's, we've got about three months, or three months out really from expiry on this option. So you might be wondering, you know, how did we pick something like this? What's the idea behind this trade? And, you know, why are we so confident that we're only gonna have this $20 downside as opposed to some of these bigger losses that we see down here while still having access to all this upside we see up here. So let's get into that. Uh, first things first, here is the chart for ticker PSTH. I uh, closed the day at about $20.20. See, there's, there's a little bit of a range between, you know, low 20s, mid 20s, but you know, that's not too relevant on a day to day basis because as we saw from this original trade, our expiry is going to be October 15th. So now the question is, you know, why did we choose what we chose? So if you take a look at PSTH, uh, what we know about PSTH is it's a SPAC, meaning a special purpose acquisition company. So it's essentially a pile full of cash and they're gonna be looking to acquire a company. They had one company lined up that they were gonna take public, but that deal fell through. So they now have about 12 to 18 months or so to find a new target. So one thing that is unique to SPACs is they have this theoretical price floor at what's called the NAV, the net asset value. And since these holding companies right now before a merger are basically just full of cash, and we could see that right here if we pop into their most recent 10Q and scroll down to the balance sheet, there you go. All the assets that they have on the balance sheet, they have some small unrestricted cash balances, but the bulk of it is roughly 4 billion in cash and marketable securities that they're holding in a trust account that they're gonna be using uh, to acquire a company through a reverse merger and take them public. So how did this factor into you know the theoretical price floor that we're talking about? If we take a look, right, we see that they have four billion in total assets. You know, that's roughly the value of cash that they have on the books. And we can see that they have 200 million shares outstanding. So if we pull up our calculator and do some really quick back of the envelope map here, we know they have four billion in total assets divided by 200 million shares. There we go which means they have roughly $20 worth of cash per share. And what do we know about cash on a short-term basis, right? It's really not gonna change in value. So just the cash that they have on their books alone is worth 20 a share, as we showed you with this quick calculation. So that means theoretically, uh, it can't get much lower than 20 bucks a share. So let's jump back to you know, things that we could potentially do with this idea in hand. Typically, we like to sell options. We might say, okay, I know it can't go any lower than 20. I'm going to try to sell some 20 strike puts. But if you take a look at the 20 strike puts that we see on a week over week basis, they don't really have any premium for this upcoming Friday. There's, you know, zero bid, five cent ask. Even next week, zero bid, five cent ask. We go out to the monthlies on August 20. And uh, you know, five cent bid, ten cent ask. There is almost zero premium on you know these puts that are super close to the money. So what does that tell us? It tells us that you know this idea of net asset value, this price floor, you know, there's some merit to it because if there were downside risk here, you know, these options would have some premium to make them attractive to investors to hedge their investment. I mean, if you take a look at something like an Apple and forward to August and you look decently far out of the money, there's there's plenty of premium available. So looking at something like PSTH and seeing no premium at all is a pretty unique situation. So with that in mind, even though we do like to sell options, we like to sell options on things that have good premium. And while we know that there's roughly a $20 price floor here on PSTH, but there's no good premium, 
that leads me to the conclusion that, hey, you know, even though we do like to sell options, option selling probably isn't the best strategy to enter into a play on this one, but that's okay. Let's jump back to the first assumption. We don't think it's gonna go lower than 20, you know, in roughly the next six, eight, 10, 12 months. So how can we play it up from here? Uh, we could, you know, go all the way out and purchase a call, but we know that if we buy a 20.5 strike call and the price doesn't move, we're gonna lose all that money. So how can we minimize the detriment that buying options provides to us? We know that when we sell options, we try to collect extrinsic value and we could pull this in right here. When we sell options, we're collecting all this extrinsic value right here and that's what's subject to theta decay. So if we want to get on the side of buying options, we're gonna to wanna to minimize the amount of extrinsic value that's on these options. So enter October 15th, 2021 expiry, 19 strike calls, which is the play that we ultimately entered. As you can see, there's a little bit of volume from, uh, from us entering into this one today. But most importantly, if we look at this column, there's 11 cents of extrinsic value on this option, as opposed to when you move closer to the price and beyond the price of the stock, it jumps up 36, 37, 22, and then you know tapers back down, but that's just because there really isn't any premium available this far out of the money. So with that in mind, we identified the opportunity to be able to sell a 19 strike call. And we did this for $1.35 today. If we pop back over to the, uh, the site that we're using, this is optionsprofitcalculator.com to model this out. Uh, we purchased 15 of these 19 strike calls for $1.35. So what do we know about when we buy a 19 strike call for $1.35? It's gonna have a break even price of $20.35 which you could you know, roughly see modeled by this almost being break even right here. However, you know, some of these red numbers get a little scary, but like we mentioned, even if we look out into October, there's no put premium down here, which is essentially telling me as an investor that there really isn't any downside risk beyond 20. So we enter into a trade with this 20.3 break even price on a 19 strike call that we paid a buck 30 for. If we go back to the trade that we entered up here, how high would PSTH have to go just for us to double our money? And the answer is, you know, this would need to be worth 260. So 19 plus 260 uh, would be $21.60. That's the point at which we get a 100% return, 21.60. So if we back this up to the five day chart, you know, it, it did spike up at the back end of last week to about 21 bucks. But if we, you know, zoom out here, this is where we double money on the trade. Uh, we've got 70 something days until expiry on October 8th or October 15th, rather 79 days till expiry. So that's reason one, number one, why we picked this, because this gives us, you know, two, three months to sit back and wait for a spike. What we're looking at right here is just a five day chart. And while there was a little bit of a spike, you know, conceivably it could get there. Things look a lot better though, if we back it up to the 180 day chart, where there was all sorts of activity on PSTH on rumors of potential acquisitions. And again, here's our red line. So while when we zoom in on the five day chart, we might come to the conclusion that, hey, you know, it's a little bit out of the way. It might be a little bit tougher to get up here. Uh, when we take a look at the 180 day chart, it would take a very minimal bounce in the scheme of where the price has been on this in the past 180 days to get us into a place where we're getting a 100% return on this. And like we mentioned at the top, when we outlined our potential outcomes on this trade, 100% uh, is you know just one of the possible outcomes, but we really have unlimited potential profit on this. If this gets back up to the support level of you know, 22, 23 bucks a share, then we could pop down here and say, okay, we're making 196%, we're gonna make about 4,000 bucks on the trade. And while these numbers look nice, I think buying 15 of these cost me about 2,000 bucks. I mean, you could start with as little as one contract, which is gonna cost you 135 bucks. And you know, obviously these returns are a little smaller when you divide the position size by 15, but the percentages remain the same. You still are gonna be doubling your money at this red line that we've drawn in here. Uh, you're still potentially, if it runs way up, you could get a 300, 400, 500% return. And you know, it's not like that kind of a movement would be unprecedented. We, we've already seen action on PSTH up around these levels. Now I'm definitely not saying it's gonna happen because you know we made the argument on the put side that since there's no premium here, it's really unlikely that it's gonna get there. Uh, there really isn't a ton of premium uh, as far as upside is concerned on the calls, there is a little bit of premium at 24, 25, but if we got up there, 
at the 24, 25 level, we're pulling a 270, we're pulling a 320% return. So in actuality, I mean, we have this setup where we've got 79 days till expiry. Our downside is really only probably right around here because the net asset value of the cash that the SPAC is holding is worth 20 a share. So this would be a you know 25% loss, which obviously we don't like to take 25% losses, but one, when you take that 25% loss over the course of three months, and two, that 25% loss uh, is the result of you being in a trade where there's some serious potential upside, that's a risk that we're willing to take. And that's why this is you know something we would categorize as a low risk, very high reward trade. We're switching over to an option buying mindset because the premium on this option change just wasn't there. And while we do say that option buying is not normally a good idea, this is one of those few exceptions where buying a 19 strike call essentially gives us a leverage position on stock that lets us make money pretty much penny for penny uh, above the current price here right now. So we were super excited to get onto that one. And instead of updating you at the end of this trade to let you know how it went, we're hopefully communicating our strategy and the trade plan for this one as we enter the trade. So if you guys want to enter that with us, you'll have the ability to do so. That's about all we've got on this one. Super interesting opportunity. We set something similar up with IPOF, but you know, uh, the numbers weren't really as good as this one we've got right here. So we thought it'd be a great idea to put together a quick video explaining what exactly we entered into right here. 19 strike calls for October 15th expiry. If you get in on this one with us, give us a shout in the comments. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. We're definitely trying to get those numbers up a little bit. But uh, hopefully we'll be checking back up on this one in three months and we'll find ourselves somewhere in the deep green. So thank you guys for watching. And until next time, this has been the Hourglass Trader where as time passes, we make money.